one place in the Bible says that who is he that replied against God? Mm -hmm. It would have been fair had he took us out because the Bible said the wages of sin is death. <clears throat> and God knows, I can say for myself, I did some work that I should have been paid for. But God had mercy on us and kept back what was due. Amen. Amen. We give honor to the Spirit of Christ. We thank God for His loving kindness. We thank Him much for His grace and mercy. Thank God for divine revelation of who He is. Thank Him how He revealed Himself first to the prophets. We thank Him for how He came into the world and ministered the gospel Himself, revealing Himself to the apostles. And we are grateful that he continues to minister to us even now by the Holy Ghost. And we thank God for another opportunity to share the word of God with you. We thank God for those that are viewing by way of internet, whether by Facebook or YouTube. We certainly thank God for you. And we hope that something will be said to be a blessing to you. We greet you with the words of grace and peace. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I would like to uh, invite your attention to uh, the book of uh, Matthew. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Matthew, the seventh chapter. <coughs> and we're going to... Uh, Kind of focus in on verse one here today. Um, I had mentioned that I would get around to this, and well, we're getting around to it today. There's a lot of confusion uh, about this particular uh, passage of scripture. One of the most quoted uh, passages in the Bible. And people uh, misunderstand what is being said here. Amen. The word of the Lord says, judge not. And, and folk want to stop right there. And say, well, you can't judge me. <laughs> Only God can judge. Well, that's not true. Nothing is further from the truth. This uh, scripture is not saying that we can't judge. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. We make judgment every day. The only time people like to invoke these two words is when they're in the wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't want nobody to call them out. Well, you judge it now. You can't judge me. Well, we're going to see about that today. <clears throat> uh, we gonna, I'm going to show you what the Bible tells us that we are to judge righteously. So they want to say judge not. That ye be not judged. Nothing could be more misunderstood. Amen. If I point out a fact, mm -hmm. not judging you, you said that that was a lemon tree. <laughs> now, I know what lemons look like. Know what they taste like. Now, if I see some different kind of fruit on the tree that you said was a lemon tree, I'm not judging you. Mm -hmm. No, brother, them, that's figs. Because I'm acquainted with both. You know, I know what a fig tree look like. Know what figs look like. Know what figs taste like. So if I point out 
the fact that it is not what you say it is, I'm not judging you. I want you to journey over now to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. And we'll begin reading at verse chapter uh, verse number 17. Kind of put a Bible marker on at, uh, Mark 7 because we're going to come back there. We're going we're gonna to read further than just that first verse. Mm -hmm. So we can get an understanding. Mm -hmm. First Peter chapter 4 and at verse 17. So now remember the subject is judge not. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> might get a few emails off this one, but that's okay. Please send your emails. I love hearing from you. First Peter chapter 4 and at verse 17, and the word of God says, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And that's the problem today. There is no judgment Mm -hmm. in these so-called churches. Mm -hmm. A lot of honey bun, sugar-coated, watered-down doctrine and no judgment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Preachers are, are jelly back now. They are afraid to call a thing a thing. Now, all they want to do is make folk feel good. Make folks feel happy. I don't want to condemn nothing. No. But God told this preacher what to do. He said reprove and rebuke. Mm -hmm. No reprove, which means correct. And rebuking, which means to call out. Don't make folk feel good. Folk don't like it when you reprove them. When you rebuke them, they don't like it. When you call out their folly, call out their foolishness, it, it's not well received. Very seldom is it well received. So the Bible says here in 1 Peter chapter 4 at verse 17, for the time is come that judgment must first begin judgment must begin at the house of God. The whole reason you come here is so that you can be straightened out. I would be derelict in my duty if I did, if I saw you headed the wrong direction and didn't say nothing. No, you have some teachers in school, they will just pass some students along. They're not doing that child no favor. You know, they may know that child's parent or their free, or they, this child is a, a, a student, you know, he's, his parents have of, of some affluence and they just pass them along. You're not, doing, you're not doing that child no favor. You know, I had a preacher to contact me uh, some years ago. And he was very complimentary of our message. And I really enjoy uh, listening to you. And, he's, and then he said something that I was, was real strange. He said, man, I wish I could preach what you're preaching. Mm -hmm. I said, well, why not? It, it's, it's, I'm preaching. It's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, man, I, I got, got a family to take care of. Basically, what he was saying is, if he got up and told the line, those people would run him off. And and he worried about his taking care of his family. Preaching is a hustle for him. No, the Bible says judgment must begin here. When you come in here, this is, you come here to get cleaned up. For the time has come 
that judgment must begin at the house of God. Watch this. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? That's why this thing have to be tight when we come in here because the world is looking at us. Amen. No, the world, they used to laugh at us mm -hmm. because of, you know, the shouting and the speaking in tongues and all of that. They used to laugh at us because we had integrity. But now they're laughing at us because we're doing everything they're doing and we say we're right. <coughs> if it first began with us, mm -hmm. what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Look at verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, mm -hmm. if the righteous skip, I mean, I mean, all of this that we're doing, all of this that we gave up, mm -hmm. we still just gonna barely make it in. I mean, they, as the folk will say, by the skin of your teeth. You know, your teeth have skin. It calls it a, a, a now very thin, and that's how. If you make it into the kingdom, you gonna badly make it. That's why we can't play with you. We got to talk. We got to tell you the truth, even if it hurts your feelings. And we got folk. You got some scared preachers. They don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Mm -hmm. They're just scary. But you know what? I would whole lot rather you be mad and offended with me than for God to be mad with me. No, I'm not gonna do I'm 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 not I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna preach the gospel. And I'm gonna tell you, I've been I've been places preaching. Man, and you can see that word hidden. You can see it. And they're just looking. Oh, looking up at the ceiling, now they got to, you know, tip, put their finger up and tip out. But but while while prayer service was going on, all they were with, they were just enjoying themselves. Not a word coming. No, I've had I've had some walk out on me. Mm -hmm. they, they say, well, uh, can't stand the heat. Get out the kitchen. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? How are you going to make it if, if the righteous can just barely get in? That's why it's dangerous, all of this, this once saved, always saved stuff. That, that's, that's, that's a dangerous gospel. Well, I mean, now you, can, you you don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. And you're saved anyhow. Do whatever you want to do. Live any kind of way you want to live. You know, I'm, I'm in this uh, minister's group <laughs> on, uh, in, on Facebook. And they, uh, the administrator have, uh, you know, they threatened to put me out there. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. you know, that's okay. Y'all can put me out. I don't care. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. <clears throat> um, and so they were asked, they were debating about whether a person can be saved if they commit suicide. And I, I just said, brethren, we got to take our personal feelings out of this. It doesn't matter how we feel personally about anything. The word of God trumps all of our feelings. It doesn't matter how I feel. 
Yeah, I may have had a close relationship with this person, but error is error. <clears throat> you know, and, and I've been in a position to where I could address things up. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been in ministry for a good while now, and I've had to uh, preside over quite a few funerals. And some of them, they really pulled at my heart. I remember my former pastor. His brother uh, was tragically murdered. But his brother wasn't saved. And he he was honest with himself. He said he didn't have the strength to do it. He said he called me, asked me to do it. I said, okay. I said, now you know what I, he said, that's why I called, because I know you're not going to get up there and lie for it. Mm -hmm. And I went in there, church packed. Probably a couple of thousand in there. Mm -hmm. And I told those people the truth. Mm -hmm. See, there's one thing about it, I don't want, whenever you hear Pastor Darrell, I want you to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. I don't want nobody to leave a service that I spoke at Feeling all right about being a sinner. A couple of years later, he called me to do another funeral. And I was quite vexed at this funeral. Again, the church was packed out, and the Holy Ghost led me to Revelation. Where it said, He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And some of them was upset with that. Don't make me know, never mind. You called me. I didn't ask you to preach. Mm -hmm. You don't want the truth to be told. Don't call Pastor Darrell. Mm -mm. I want to be known. I'm going to get up and I'm going to preach the word. I'm going to tell the people you got to live right in order to go back with the Lord when he comes. And folk don't want to hear it. Well, you, you should just focus on encouraging the family. No. Because anybody, anybody, that, anybody that was there, they know what they got to do to be saved. They know they got to repent. They know they got to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. They know they got to be filled with the Spirit of God. And they know they got to live something. Unlike some of these funerals I've been to. And folk just get up and lie. It's a good thing I ain't God because I will strike them dead right there. And lying to folk. I was at a funeral one time and the preacher now, it was obvious that the man wasn't saved because he was up there just all over the place trying to preach. Hmm. And he's going to say, it don't matter what you do. It just matter who you trust in. That's all. If we, die, we just read, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? Come on. How are you going to make it? Can you live nothing? You just rambunctious. A womanizer. A whole month. How you gonna get in? All right, go to St. John now. St. John. Chapter uh, 7. St. John. Chapter 7. Everywhere I go, holiness is in my mind. No, I've, I've preached at Baptist church. And when in there, he told the folk, it's holiness of hell. Mm -hmm. And if an imam, a Muslim imam called me, that I, I, yes, I will come. Mm -hmm. I will go to that mosque. I will take my shoes off. If, you know, I'm going to honor your custom. But guess what? When they get up, I'm going to preach Jesus Christ and holiness of hell. Mm -hmm. I, I, anywhere a door is open, I, if you invite me, I'm coming. St. John chapter 7. 
and a verse uh, 24. We're talking about judgment now. Mm -hmm. on, Judge not, lest ye be judged. One of the most quoted, misunderstood verses of the Bible. Listen at this now. St. John chapter 7 and at verse 24, the word of God says, judge not according to the appearance. And that's true. You don't, don't, don't just judge the way it looks. Mm -hmm. Come on. Because you know, some folk can be, they can be dressed so scruffy, you know, because they don't value all of these name brand stuff. Those could be some of the richest people you ever know. You, But you had already determined that they didn't have nothing. And on the other hand, these folk can have all kind of name brands on and be broke as I don't know what. Come on, man. I remember one time I was at the gas station and this fella pulled up in the SUV, I mean nice SUV, had some uh, rims all in on there and that rascal run up to the uh, uh, counter talking about give me $3 on six. <laughs> and you, you got this nice <laughs> Talking about three dollars. Man, anybody would have seen that. They thought, okay, well, he got me. He got me. Judge, they said, oh, judge not according to the appearance. Don't judge based on what it looked like. But look, look what he says here. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. That did, now, that don't, that don't sound like he said not to judge. He said, judge righteous. Judge righteous judgment. Judge according to this word of God here. All right, go to uh, <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, some upset some folk here, but that's all right. I'm, I'm here to tell you the truth. All right, only God can judge. Well, you know what? By the time God judges, it's too late, man. Ain't nothing you can do then. At least, at least I'm coming here here showing you what the word of God says. You got a chance to straighten up. But once God gets to you, it's too late. <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter 3 and uh, verse 16. We start at verse 16. Second Timothy chapter 3. And in verse 16, the word of the Lord says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Watch this. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So if I take you to the word of God, I'm judging you righteously. Because that's what it's for. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it's profitable. It's for your benefit. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Where else are you going to go to get some instruction in righteousness? See, that thing here, tell you, I tell you all the time, it's pertinent information in the Bible to govern every aspect of your life. You tell a man how to be a husband. Tell a woman how to be a wife. You tell children how they ought to be children. They play with their children. They tell them, they tell them to honor your father and mother. <clears throat> Anytime you got some friction, somebody not in the world. Yeah, it, 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 it get tight on you. Sometimes you don't want to do it. But the word says I got to do it because it, it's profitable for doctrine. So the word says I got to do it. Over in over, uh, Colossians 3 and 19, the Bible tells a man, he, he said, uh, 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 he said, husband can't be bitter against his wife. She might do something that would just, just rile you up, but then if you're in the word, you, you, you can't be bitter against her. <clears throat> That's why I don't understand how a man go, go beating on no one. You know that fella ain't in nowhere in the box. Because he one place, he another place said you can't be a bra. <clears throat> Go 
All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. Anything got to straighten you out. And that's the problem. Nobody don't want to be straightened out. They want to just do what they want to do and don't want nobody to say nothing. This Bible says a whole lot about homosexuality. And the big time preachers have gone silent on it because it's con considered controversy. <clears throat> Probably for correction and instruction in righteousness. Watch this. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You don't have, I got, a, I, you know, I got my, this is my lesson plan right here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, go to uh, Leviticus now. Leviticus. Leviticus. <clears throat> Amen. Leviticus chapter uh, 10. Y'all don't like it, but it's right in the There's enough of this mamsy pamsy preaching going on. Somebody got to tell the people something. <clears throat> Leviticus chapter 10. And we'll get start at verse 10. Leviticus chapter 10. And in verse 10. What did the Lord says? And that ye may put difference between holy and unholy. So I, I call the thing I, I this this the, the word of God said all scripture that ye may put a difference between holy and and unholy. But today, ain't no difference. They, they, they have merged the line. They have blended the lines. I was coming up, it was a stark come. If, if the folk had holiness on their side, they, well, you knew what to what expect when you got in there. Wasn't going to be no half-naked women in there. I thought you go to some of these churches now and the women look like they oh my lord Amen. now if somebody busy and don't know no better we don't buy I don't buy cause you, you, you gotta be taught something but if, he, if they come in here off the street and they looking around they seen all all the other women in there looking like hookers. But the Bible says that ye may put a difference between holy and unholy. There's supposed to be a difference. We're not supposed to sound like the world. We're not supposed to act like the world. It ought to be a difference. I never thought we'd see the day where you got to tell a man how to dress with all these old skin tight jeans, these skinny jeans on. The used to be you didn't have to tell, cause you know a man. Would, but now, oh my lord! Now you got to do, cause, cause you know the, the scripture. How the, the scripture said, uh, "Women adorn themselves in modest appearance." But you know what it said before that? Likewise. Women, because he was talking to the man first. The man got to do it for the woman do it. He said, likewise. You know, but they used to run right there. Women and darn themselves in my bed. But that thing said, likewise first. And he was talking to the man first. Right. Hey, hey, you got your shirt button, a button. Don't start button, tell your neighbor. Showing your top on me. And that ye may put a difference between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean. It's a difference. Come on, amen. 
See, see this old fashioned. You don't hear this too much no more. But the word of God is still right. It never changed. I do, they, 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 they quit preaching it, but it's still in here. If you hadn't told the pages out. Look at verse 11. And that ye may teach the children of Israel, teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them by the hands of Moses. How are you gonna know what God is saying if you won't teach the people what's in the book? That's right. That's right. That's right. Here you get up and read one piece of a scripture and close your eye and open up your notebook. Your interpretation. Come on now. Give a bunch of junk you learned in, in, in cemetery school. I know it says seminary, but it's cemetery school. Because all you do is go in there and learn about what a bunch of dead men told, wrote. Mm -hmm. Cemetery school. A, a seminary don't make a preacher. God got to make you a preacher. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and if God made you a preacher, you're going to stick with his word. All right, go, go, go back to Matthew now. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. <clears throat> we'll pick it up in verse... Uh, Verse 16. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 16 now. <clears throat> well, we give 15. Verse 15. And the word of God says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. And look, watch this. If you see, if you don't know how to judge righteously, you won't know how to tell. Right. Now, he's, in, he's telling you how to judge. Mm -hmm. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Come on. That's judgment. I'm expecting your fruit. Mm -hmm. Ye shall know them by their fruit. Watch this. Do men gather grapes of thorns? No. You get grapes off of a, a, a grape vine. Or figs of thistle. No, you get figs off of a fig tree. <clears throat> Even so, every good tree, watch this, bringing forth good fruit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every good tree, bringing forth good fruit. Yes. These, these jack leg things can't live nothing. Mm -hmm. They live worse than the people. The, the Bible outlined what the qualification of a preacher are. Amen. Amen. It said a bishop then must be blameless. Mm -hmm. The husband of one wife. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You on your second and third wife. You ain't use a false prophet. Mm -hmm. I'm not judging you. Come on. I'm telling you what the word says. What the word says. Blameless. Always in the news for some kind of scam. Stealing the money. Messing with the women in the church. Mm -hmm. And some of you old nasty things messing with the men in the church. Mm -hmm. Come on. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. And see, I, you, see they done told the people, well, see now, you don't, don't you say nothing. You just pray. That ain't, that ain't nobody. Now, don't, don't, don't you put your mouth on no man of God. <laughs> He ain't no man. That's a hypocrite. And some of and some people they, they they're afraid to say anything. Call these things out. Even so, every good tree bringing forth good fruit. Fruit, watch this. But a corrupt tree. What kind of tree? A corrupt tree bringing forth evil fruit. If he. And what, you, that, what that's talking about is lifestyle. Mm -hmm. His lifestyle. <clears throat> well, we, we are all struggling with something. If you, if you still struggle, well, not everybody, not, and that's true. 
But if you if you can't you can't got it together at all, you don't need to be up in front of people. If the blind lead the blind, they're both gonna fall in the ditch. I, I won't follow a man live worse than I do. What we if what he got can't help him, I don't want. A good tree, watch this. Look at verse eighteen. But a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree, listen, watch this, verse 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Yeah, these men in scandal after scandal. You see, when I was coming along, they set you down. And 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 chance off, you weren't gonna get you weren't gonna get up again. If they let you back up again, it's gonna be a year, a year and a half. They didn't play with that. They will sit you down. And you know what? When they set you down, you sit in the back. Can't have you up in front of people walk as they say. They would say walking slew foot. <clears throat> See that that, that 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 was old fashioned holiness, and they took their time with the young minister. You didn't get no do no whole bunch of preaching just start now. Mm -mm. They put you up maybe two, maybe three times a year. That that was it. But now these things ain't ain't dried off good. We get baptized, and he's just preaching and preaching. And I tell you all the time, if you knew anything, you wouldn't want it. You wouldn't want this. Because the Bible said, brethren, be not many fathers, for we shall receive the greater judgment. God deal with the preacher different than he deal with the, at the lay member. He expect more from the lay. If God expect more, then I ought to be able to expect more too. Amen. You know, this is man. Man, I fought this thing. I didn't want it. I remember, uh, but Ella Ellis, we was in, in love. He called me out. You know, I would play instruments when I, I would read for the priest. And we was in that, uh, and he flat out called me out. You know, that's why, you know, it, I couldn't do nothing. I, it was embarrassing, but he called me out from the people because he knew the spirit showed him. I ain't had, had to had this up. Because the Bible he said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. I had been, you know, I had been, you know, as the, as the folk would say, running. Because you know? for, for, for the way the Lord uh, developed me, said on the instrument, I never had no lesson. I was about, I think about eight years old or so. Was at church one night, and the spirit moved on me to go to the altar. Wasn't even tall enough to sit on the stool, cause cause I could to use the foot pedal I had to stand. And that time, I, you know, my, my my dad he had readers then, but as time would go by, they would, <coughs> you know, some of them they stop and whatnot. Mm -hmm. He never asked me to read for him. I was his reader. But you know what God was doing? He was putting the word in. He was putting the word in. He knew how my ministry would start. He knew I wouldn't have a musician, so I would have to. I would have to do it myself. That's why he gave me that gift. Never had no lesson. I, I am. I'm able to hear things. You know, I find you key. If I hear something, I, I, I can catch it and play it. <clears throat> and he was putting. I, I read. I was my father reading for years. That's how I know. That's how I know the scriptures. <clears throat> and one thing about it, when if you was reading from my reading from my dad, you had to be quick. <clears throat> it's something like I said. I, I man, I saw how what how ministry can disappoint you and hurt. I mean, I didn't want to fool with people like this. Here, people they you flat on their back and you help to get them up. Then they walk home. Not only that, lie on you. Then those same people fall down again and you go help them again. 
I don't know. I ain't gonna deal with that. Oh, hard head people. I didn't want to deal with it. I was doing everything else to try to get God to leave me alone. But all he was doing was making me a minister. <clears throat> a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither, watch this, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. The tree is what it is. Why look and look at verse 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Trees represent men. So you, you better take this judgment and get yourself right. You, you can't judge me. Oh, really? Now, he just we just read where he said all scripture is profitable for doctrine, reproof, and correction, instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished. If he's giving you the word of God, you, you better line up with it. Don't you fight it. Okay, look, 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 look at verse 20, verse 20, verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. So anybody tell you you can't judge me, they don't want to look at your fruit because they know their fruit don't line up with the fruit of the Spirit. And we got Galatians 5, about verse 22, itemizes the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, faith, and temperance. But they're not, they're, none of their life, their life don't line up with that. And if you point it out, well, you judging now. I'm not judging you. I'm showing you what the Word of God says. <clears throat> Wherefore, by their fruits shall you know them. But there's some one thing folk need to quit saying that only God can judge. Mm -hmm. The fact about it is, you know, young children, the three and four year old, oh, they make they make judgment and they make righteous judgment too. Oh, they gonna call it like they see it. And the Bible even tells us that we need to become like children. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's only, only when you get older that you learn how to cover up stuff. And on this child, he, he, stop that. Don't you, oh, I'm sorry. Well, he ain't telling the truth. Don't get mad at him. <clears throat> Wherefore, by their fruit shall ye know this. You, you don't know my heart. What you doing is in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That came from your heart. But see, see, you don't know my heart. Yeah, I do know your heart. How you going to say that? Let me, let me hold that. We're going to come back there. Go to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Let me show you something. <clears throat> Mark chapter 7 uh, <clears throat> and um, verse 21. Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. Watch this. Mark chapter 7 and at verse 21. What? Now, look, look, this is what the word of God says. I know. Since you say, I don't know your heart. Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. Listen now. And the word of God says, for from within, out of the heart of men, where did it come from? Out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, adultery, fornication, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, 
lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, <laughs> foolishness. Watch this. All these things come from within and defile a man. You doing what's in your heart. You tell me I don't know your heart. Your behavior is your heart. By their fruit, you shall know them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Look at verse 21. Watch this. Verse 20. Back in Matthew 9. Matthew 7, 21. Matthew chapter 7 and that verse 21, the word of God says, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now, you can fool yourself if you want to, but you know, you know. <clears throat> One thing about it is you can't fool God. Some people do something so long that they ain't fool themselves. No the old folks used to say, you tell a lie long enough, you eventually believe it. <laughs> it, was, it, was one, it was one lady, uh, my, my dad used to tell, tell about this lady, she lied about her age so much that she didn't even know how old she was. <laughs> she was lying and lying that she didn't really, did. she didn't even know how old she was. But they would say, well, well, now I know she's somewhere along there where they ain't be after them. Because I remember they used to run together. But she was out here lying so long, she didn't know how old she was. <clears throat> not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. You see, we're in, we in the age now where folk think you can just sprinkle a little Jesus on top of anything and it's going to be acceptable. But not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. See, folk can use that name wrong. I, could, I, I don't have time to do it today, but I can take you over to Isaiah where he tells you how seven women would take hold of one man. And he said, only let us have that. Only, we, we just want your name. We just want the name. We're going to do what we want to do. Just want your name. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to work. You got my name now. You're you, you going to have to do some things the way I want it done. <clears throat> Only a jelly back man will get mad. Let a woman take his name. Then she run out there and do what she want to do. <laughs> no, you got my name now. You, 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 you got to be Mrs. You got to be Mrs. Bush. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Why? Look at verse 22 now. Many would say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we not cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. You see, you, uh, uh, some of these false prophets, the Lord know that folks are really seeking him. So he'll allow healing to take place through a false prophet because the name of Jesus is powerful. Mm -hmm. He'll allow, this, here this person been seeking God for healing and they go to a false prophet. In some occasions, God would allow healing to take place through that false prophet, but he's still a false prophet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Many will say, <clears throat> Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Now, I can show you in the Bible where a, a false prophet lied to a real prophet. But then the Lord made him, God came along and used that old false prophet to tell that prophet the truth. Mm -hmm. the prophets, I don't get moved by that stuff now. Be a fruit inspector. <clears throat> Look at verse 23. Amen, amen. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. You, you know that song. Yeah, that's that's right. I never knew you. All of your singing on the choir, all of your worship board, all of your greeting, I never, all of your preaching, I never knew you. Mm. Depart from me, 
he that work iniquity. I ain't never knew you. That's something. All right, God from heaven. Amen, amen. Well, I, I got to let you go. We'll leave it right there. We thank God for you. We thank God for all things in the name of the Lord. I hope I said something to help somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> No other words or announcement. Let us all stand. <clears throat> now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, whose blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And every heart said, Amen. Amen. Amen.